as home with Pastor Janda, does the uh, fr uh, Tuesday team, and all those who are on the team who pray along. We are grateful to the Father. And for all those who are in the 2019 master class, both principal officers, mentors, and the students, we are grateful for the opportunity to have another uh, discussion of the orientation note number two with you today. Uh, Father, we thank you for the grace you have released for your assignment in the air trim. Have your way, sovereign rule of the universe. We hand over our vessels to you. We ask you to minister life to us through your word. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Before we begin the orientation, the Father showed me uh, two scriptures that he wants us to look at today. One of them is 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of Elohim. The preaching of the cross is offensive to many. It's offensive to those outside the kingdom and those not appointed to salvation. Because it's like a terrible thing to them. And even today in modern day Christianity, where the new plastic cross has taken hold in the false prosperity movement and the pseudo kingdom movement, no one wants to talk about the cross. No one talk, wants to talk about where we need to die. Our self nature has to be crucified with Yeshua. Everybody wants promises. Everybody wants to hear nice sounding sound bites from preachers thrown like firecrackers from television stations and from satellite and from cable, and people are just, you know, reveling in those things. There are people who have accumulated promises that are filled one journal, two journal, three journal, promises, promises, promises. But what about what will lead to the promise being fulfilled? The death of self, the death of the old nature. What about coming to that place where we receive the holistic scripture? Whenever they hear a war that strikes their flesh, they get offended. Offended in the word, offended in the Elohim, offended in the preacher, offended in the teacher. Brothers and sisters, it is one of the signs of the end times. The Bible says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, and they will heap unto themselves teachers, teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. And the master class is about reversing the trend while there's still time. Because every single day before the law returns, every single day is an opportunity for change, for adjustments. My brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you, those of you who are going to do the master class, remember we say there are four modes in which you can do, or five even. Number one is the classroom. There's a classroom on Facebook where people are invited to come and meet other remnants. It's rugged. Where you are, stretched through the world. The world is given to you non-stop, apart from three or four short breaks, for nine months. And the world comes, dealing with various aspects, your perspective, your mindset, your will, your attitude, so that the Holy, Holy Spirit can use the world and the blood of the Lamb to do a work inside of us that brings forth a new nature, a new attitude, a new lifestyle, a new perspective, a changed heart transformed, and a mind that is renewed. And you see other people, and you take your studies every day, the lesson you read, and then you do the assignment every single day until you finish the coursework in December. In November, tidy up in December, then you write your project paper. It's not an academic program for you to get a degree to look for a job. It is something the king himself said. This is the way he wants to train those who are going to serve him. So it's a kingdom empowerment system. And if the Lord tarries, it's going to lead to something awesome. Whereby the Lord will create a kingdom educational system. And every ministry and every congregation that wants to truly connect with his heartbeat will see the need to move from theater where people gather to watch a man perform to a school where people are taught trained equipped activated and released to serve the lord because the great commission is go ye not come here and it's not just go and do some evangelism it is about transformation and the transformation starts for the individual 
When the Lord is able to lay hold and transforms one individual, renews the mind and changes the perspective through that one person, it touches other people in the family, in the community, in the city, in the nation, as many as ordained to be in the loop of influence of that one. So brothers and sisters, that's the classroom. And then we have, of course, the live stream edition, where if you just watch the live stream and you don't have any other time, it is accounted to you as the master class just by blogging along what you are receiving from the word that you hear daily. Then the third one is the yes course. You log on to the website www.kingdombooksclub.com and you click on the button that says yes course. It opens up. You register your email and you get your lessons by email. It's suitable for people who don't want to be on Facebook or where Facebook download is difficult and you just want to assess by your email. You go to a server cafe, you assess your email, you read the lessons, you do the assignment. In one hour, you finish. That one hour you paid for the cyber cafe, you do your assignment. That's the yes course. Then there's a fourth method, which is by books. If you're a bookworm, you go to that website. You download the books that are scheduled for the uh, teaching year, the training year, and you study at your own pace, do the assignments, and that is a master class for you. Then there are those who don't have access to video, but you can do audio. There is a recording on Daybreak with the King, like right now, on free conference call, is given to you in MP3 format for you to listen, do the assignment, and that's it. But if you have the ability to do on two or three platforms, of course, you'll be richer, you'll be better equipped. And it's not about us. It's about you and the assignment the Father has for you, what he wants to do in your life. So what does it mean? What it means is this. You choose the one the Lord will use to bless you best. You know yourself more than we know you. And Holy Spirit will meet you where you are. And brothers and sisters, if you are going to do the master class, especially those who will be in the classroom, there are, there's a spiritual compact that the Lord has given to us which sets out expectations of behavior that if we allow Holy Spirit to walk in us, that we can be able to interact with others without creating problem. Creating problem for yourself, creating problem for other people. And it's so important that we understand that the Father wants us to operate in unity of faith and he also wants us to operate within ethical boundaries. Anything that is kingdom, there are ethical boundaries. The kingdom is not an open field where people do whatever they like. The kingdom is a place where you have the opportunity, by the grace of Elohim, you have the opportunity to come and be properly trained. And if that is so, there must be some ethical boundaries. And so what it means is that we have to create the right environment. All of us have to create the right environment through which the Father is able to teach us and instruct us. One of them, there are 12 things that constitute the ethical standard for the classroom work to take place, for learning to take place, for the presence of the Lord to be there, and for us to be profited. Number one is agape, pure love, love without agenda, love that is not complicated, love that has no negative agenda, Every one of us who the Father has called to be part of the master class, the Father requires us to operate in love. So from us, the teachers, the mentors, the principal officers, what does that mean? The Bible says that we owe no man nothing but love. Everything we do must be in love. Love constrains us. We are here because of love. We say yes to the Father because of love, love of him and love of the brethren. So also the mentors and the principal officers who have volunteered their life. And we say to brethren, as you are coming in, let's remember the new commandment Yeshua gave in John 13, 34. He says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Not just love one another as he has loved us. How did he love us? Sacrificially. That you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So let's walk in love. Let's live in love. If we live in love and walk in love, then without any shadow of doubt, we will be able to ensure 
that by the grace of the Lord, this classroom will have the presence of the Lord always. The second thing is holiness. We must be holy unto the Lord. You don't come to this classroom with the old nature. You don't come to start a holy relationship with somebody of the opposite gender. You don't come to the classroom to do, begin to do things that are unseeming. We are told we are not supposed to come to the classroom and you talk the language, the gutter snipe language of the world. Anything that is unholy, we check it out of the way. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a divine, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So you don't post anything that is liquid, anything that is unholy, ungodly, pornographic, or whatever, that you know will have the capacity to make somebody else to stumble in the classroom. You don't post that. You don't have it. We are told in 1 Peter chapter 1, 15, But as he which has called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, I am holy, be holy, for I am holy. We have to walk in holiness. It's not a doctrine of a holiness people. Holiness is the nature of Elohim. Just as love is his nature, holiness is his nature. If we say we are his, then we all have to live in holiness by his grace. The third thing the Father wants us to walk in is in unity. Unity, as it said in John 17, 20 to 23, is one other indicator that we are connected to him and to one another. Let's be united. Let's walk in unity. And if we're going to walk in unity, let's have alignment. For those the Father has called to be part of this program, there is a divine order he has said as you come in fitting to it. Don't try to be, you know, don't try to, you know, begin to be uh, do one upmanship and show that you, you are this or that or that. Leave those things. Take your place. Be connected. Be in alignment. Let's walk in unity. Whenever we walk in love, whenever we walk in holiness and in unity, the presence of the Lord is thick there. The fourth thing is service. This is about serving one another. Pastor Grace and I were serving you. Do you know what? Once the master class opens from January to December, I mean from February to December, this is our day job. And we do it with joy. The Father has ordained to use us to help his sons who he has brought within our loop of influence to get into divine destiny. We do it with joy. The principal officers and the mentors are people who have finished the program and they are volunteered to help others out of a sense of service. And we say to students, as you come into the classroom, be in the service mode. You may see something that, you know, will help another person to get along. Please serve one another. When we serve one another, we attract the divine presence. Number five, we need to have commitment to seek for the kingdom. All of us, all of us who are part of it. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye for the kingdom and his righteousness. All other things shall be added to you. Every other thing shall be added to us. So we seek for the kingdom. We seek for the righteousness of the king of Elohim. When we have that approach, we're not going to allow it to trip us over. When we have that approach, we are going to set our face like a flint upon the kingdom and the king himself. Seek it first. Seek the kingdom. Live in the now, in the consciousness of the world to come. Live in the consciousness that they will come when the trumpet will sound. Live in the conscience that the kingdom will be here on earth and we will rule and reign with him and therefore make earthly choices in the light of eternity. They live also in the consciousness that the king is knocking at the door of every heart. They say, let me come in and exercise sovereign rule over your life. That is kingdom life. The governmental system, when, when God has governmental authority over our life by his spirit, that is the kingdom. So, we want every one of us to live by that rule. Number six, consecration. You cannot go far in the things about a master class if you don't consecrate your all. Uh, some people have given Elohim 30%, others 50%, others 70%, others 90 others 95%. Consecration is about the totality of laying ourselves on the altar. Paul said in Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He redeemed us. He owes us. He owes us by redemption. Sorry, number one, he owes us by creation. 
whatever you create, you own. Number two, he owns us by redemption. Whatever you redeemed with your own blood, that thing is not yours. It's not, yeah, we, know, we are redeemed with the blood. We are not to live our life for ourselves. We are to live for he who owns us by redemption. Number three is by his providential care over our lives. It's of the lost message that we are not consumed. His messages are new every day. You have no idea what attacks the enemy has launched against you. You have no idea the various demons that have been assigned against you. And the Father has seen you through them all. You need to know that the Father wants us to come to that place where by His grace we are conscious of the reality that the Father wants us to live for Him and Him alone. And whatever you consecrate to Him is safe. If it's not consecrated to him, it's unsafe. A life not consecrated to him is a life that cannot enjoy the best of the blood. And the Father wants us to enjoy the best of the blood, which is possible only when we hand over our lives to him, whole and entire. Number seven, burden. The Lord wants us to have clean communication. We talked on this when we were talking about holiness. Have clean communication only. Everything you want to do, leave jokes, leave those dry jokes, leave those worldly jokes, leave those things you pick from sporting events, all those foul language, leave them aside. There is kingdom communication, holy, pure. Kingdom communication, edifying. Let there be no evil communication come out of anyone, whether in your writing or what you are posting. Not even jokes. Jokes are not our fault as kingdom citizens. Number eight, let there be deliberate engagement. Let's deliberately engage. Let's be committed. If you're a student, engage daily. Daily study. Daily make up your time, mind. You're going to study what is posted in the classroom. Not only that, you do the assignment. Well, the moment you begin to change your own rule to what you want, then you're saying what the Father showed that will deliver the master class is not real. And some people have been run around in circles because they allow their own personalities to set aside what Elohim. Remember what the Lord said about the Romans? I mean, said about the Jews when Paul was writing to the Romans. He said, I have great heaviness and sorrow for my brethren, but they setting aside Elohim's ways. have gone aside to construct their own ways. Have a heart of deliberate engagement. Also, it is important if you're in the master class, then seek to be a friend of George Akalono and Pastor Grace One Word, Pastor Grace One Word Akalono, and the, the mentors assigned to you and the principal officers, the director of studies will be announced officially tomorrow, and the registrar, Stephanie Foster. You know, be make friends with them. The reason is that if there is issue, they need to call your attention. If you're not a friend of someone on Facebook, it's going to be very difficult to be in communication with that person. Number nine, communion. During the training, there will be several opportunities for us to meet for face-to-face -face interaction. Face-to-face, -to, -face, to get to know each other. After being in the classroom, for instance, February, March, April, May, June, July, you know what? After six months, we have opportunity in the beginning of the seventh month of our being together. August 2, the first opportunity is the commissioning of the 2018 master class, their graduation. It's going to be in Meriden, Connecticut, in the United States of America. Anywhere you are in the world, if you need a visa, let us know. To, uh, contact teacher Stephanie Foster so that an official invitation will be given to you for you to apply. So we'll meet at that graduation of the 2018, those preceding this class. Then the next day, which is Saturday, August 3, early day, this time that we are having this meeting is going to be the induction of the 2019 master class or what the, in the people in the world educational system, what is called, you know, the, uh, what is, uh, what is it again? The matriculation. The matriculation into the master class will take place on Saturday, August 3. And then, that weekend is Conference of IMF USA, International Ministers Fellowship USA. All the Meridian Connect Code would like to see everyone. If any master class register to come very soon, the form will come out. Very soon the website will come out where you can register to come. Come, let's interact. The other opportunity to interact will be found at 
Open Gates 2 2020, second weekend of January. Open Gates in London, England. We'll have a global conference of the International Business Fellowship. You'll meet many other brethren. Beyond that, we will be, Pastor Grace and I will be in Ireland, we'll be in South Africa, we'll be in a few nations like, Zimb uh, like Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia, and some other countries. Each of them will be able to meet with you, impart some grace in you, stir up what is in you, and those things are part of the communion. Men and brethren, number 10, spiritual transformation. The master class is not head knowledge base. It is heart knowledge base. It's for transformation of the heart. It's for renewal of the mind. So as long as you are in the class, you got to know when have you got it. Where, at what point can you really confirm and pinpoint you made the decision without looking back again, that you cross the Rubicon, you are going to serve the Lord whole and entire, and your heart has been touched, your mind has been renewed, you are seeing things differently from what you used to see them, and you are totally, completely vested in it. There has to be a time when you make that decision. There has to be a time when you make that transition. When you make that transition, when you make that decision, that will be clear to you. At what point does this transformation take place? It's not enough to come into the classroom. There has to be a time when you know that certain things have shifted. Things that used to offend you, offend you no more. Things that used to trip you over, trip you over no more. Be certain things, you've been able to deal with them because and weights of your life, things that, you know, wear you down, you've been able to. Look at, let's look at the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter 12, and see something. Hebrews 12 from verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are passed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There has to be a time when the sin that besets you, the sin that you fall into repeatedly, there has to be a time it leaves you. You escape its grip. And he said, wait, the things that are not necessary sin, but are habits or attitudes of life, the things that are not necessary. How do you do that? We are told in verse 2, looking unto Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, and he set down at right hand of Elohim. Men and brethren, he said, let's follow the example of Yeshua. For the joy he said before him, he endured the cross. In the same way we say to you, there has to come a time when you want to be so liberated from the bondage of the flesh and of the soul. There has to come a time when you are so, you, are, you see the glorious picture of what your life will be when you are no longer in bondage to the, to the trappings of the fleshly nature. And you begin to live for him. And for him alone, you begin to swear the orbit. You begin to be in pursuit of destiny. There has to be a time when those things that you used to, used to do as a result of your background, those mindsets drop away from you. And the key is to look unto Yeshua. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. If you look up to him, he will surely help you. It is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, you need to know at what point the transformation takes place. If you know, it is going to be very important. Paul said concerning his own desire. 1 Corinthians 9.27 I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. The Lord is saying that there must be purpose to transformation. If you don't purpose it strongly, it won't happen. You must purpose it. That the Father's plan for your life, what he purchased for you by the blood, it shall be appropriated full, whole, and entire. And you are not going to miss it. And then number 11, we need to say something on the use of Hebraic names of Elohim. I want to say this off the bat. We are not part of the sacred names movement. We are not part of it at all. We don't even know them. We are not part of them. This comes about by, as we're doing, the, uh, over the years, the Lord has been showing us this vessel. Over the years, the Lord has been showing this vessel, how in the 4th century, Rome captured the larger wing of the church. 
there was a smaller wing, a remnant that went underground. But Rome married that larger wing. In order to sustain marriage of the larger wing, Rome, which was the conqueror of the Jews, needed to have this new religion which will serve this interest. Christian in name, but in essence, Roman, an instrument of colonialism. So Rome wanted the marriage with the church to subdue the church, to subdue the gospel. And in order to do that, he needed to take away consciousness of the Hebraic roots of the gospel. The roots that Paul spoke about in Romans chapter 9, 10, 11, and warned the church not to be proud, the Gentiles not to be proud, but to know that our roots are the dealings of Elohim with Israel and the Hebrews as a whole. Now the Lord began to show how Rome began the replacement theology in practical terms. So everything that seemed to refer to the Hebraic roots of the gospel, he took it away. The Roman language, official language of Rome, concerning most of the things they did was Greek, because Rome defeated the Greeks and accepted the Greek literature and language as a means, as well as their own Latin. But for conquest, they allowed the Greek language that was already being known by the empire of Alexander the Great and others, they took it on. So what happened is this. Rome couldn't afford to have anything Hebraic again in the gospel. Everything had to be changed. Everything. So that there will be no Hebraic roots. So the name Yahweh gave to humanity through Moses to know him. He said, I'm Yahweh, man's name. Or the name Elohim that conveys Elohim as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the God that is us. It was taken away. And then we have just a generic God. If you say God in Saudi Arabia, they don't know whether you're talking about Muhammad or Elohim or anybody. You say it in Iran, they don't know which because God is generic. Okay, so for this vessel, having discovered this truth, I want to call him by the name he revealed himself, Yahweh, Elohim. Not as any part of any sacred names movement, but just the reality that I reject replacement gospel. I know the Father has a dealing with Israel and the Jews. And even though it's like in abeyance now, like he's in suspended mode now, the Father will come back to it when the church age finishes. If you read Revelation, chapter, the Revelation from chapter 4 to the end, it's all about Israel. Elohim will deal with Israel again. In the same way, I want to call my Savior by the name the Father gave him. The day he was born, he was called Yeshua. Yeshua. Elohim with us. Emmanuel. And so, the Roman idea to remove those names and to call by generic names, starting with the Greek word for Jesus was Yoshus. I mean for Yeshua was Yoshus. And when the English became the predominant Western language over the Greek, from Greek, Yoshus, it was changed to Jesus. You call him by Jesus, it is fine. You call him by Yoshus, it is fine. But I would like to call him by Yeshua Hamashiach. To say that the Jesus I mean, there are many other Jesuses today, but the Jesus I speak about is Yeshua Hamashiach, the incarnate Elohim, the one who came from heaven, took human flesh, went to the cross, died at the cross, resurrected, and is seated on his throne back again in heaven. I want to call him by his name, but we don't force you. No, you call him by what you are comfortable with. If you are comfortable with Jesus, faith. If you are from one of the indigenous people, they have indigenous names for him, call him. That is fine. Nobody's going to say to you, why are you calling him? No, just be comfortable. I'm just explaining where we are coming from. So when you see me write, Yeshua, know that I am distinguishing it from this Jesus of the new plastic cross. The one that doesn't require anything from you, just giving you a Father Christmas type of Jesus. I'm distinguishing the Jesus of the Bible, the Yeshua of the Bible. So I want you to understand that. And uh, we are not insisting that you must follow suit. This is very important. And that is why from time to time I call him Yeshua, Jesus, to know who I'm talking. So you need to know, I'm explaining this, that you may know where I'm coming from. The twelfth thing we want to say is that all things are by grace. Everything in the master class is entirely by grace. Nobody can run a nine-month intensive program by his strength. Nobody can by his own mind think up topics and bring it out. It's not possible. It's the inspired word. 
that the Father says, serve my people. Right now, we're waiting on him. The first lesson that will start the master class on March 1, he will bring it out. The second, he'll bring it out. That's how every year he says, this suit of lessons, whether it's 9 or 10 or 11 or 12, he will determine. We're waiting on him. I want to say to you, it's all by grace. And if you are in the master class, I want to tell you, you can only do it by grace. If you want to do it in the strength of your own arm, you will fail. If you want to try it and think, oh, it's a piece of cake, I can know. After all, I've done a graduate degree. I've done a PhD before. You fail. This is spiritual. The natural man receiving all the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him. I want to say this to you. If you humble yourself under the mighty hand of Elohim, he will lift you up. If you tell the Lord, Lord, I can't do it by myself, help me. The Lord will help you. Grace, the Bible says he gives more grace. How does he give more grace? When we're humble before him. How does he give more grace? When we pray. How does he give more grace? When we hunger and thirst for righteousness. How does he more, give more grace? When we are conscious that by our strength we will fail. That we need his strength. And we open up ourselves to get his strength. And brethren, it is so important. That we realize Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, For who, had, who make it to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou dost not receive it? Don't be one of those who go to your uh, local assembly and you begin to boast. I'm in the master class. I boast, boast to people, boast to you. No, this is not a boasting matter. It's a grace matter. Receive grace. And please remember, if you missed the first message that was given yesterday, the orientation note number one, there will be orientation note every day till the end of this month. The orientation notes prepare you to understand this project, the Global Advanced Mentorship Program, and this flagship, the Masterclass Series. We used to mentor a few people one-on-one, -on -one, and the time came, the father says, at the rate of one-on-one, -on -one, my purpose will not be fulfilled. I place grace for multiplied mentorship. What was it, Lord? He said, bring them into the classroom. We ran ahead of Elohim before. It didn't work because it wasn't the timing. Then in 2013, when we received further direction, we invited people into the master classroom and mentored them. And from that first set and the second set and the third set, we began to have mentors who are collaborating with us. Brothers and sisters, don't miss any lesson. If you are not yet in the classroom, just write and say to us, be in the classroom. Listen, even if you are going to do yes course, you are going to do it through uh, Facebook Live blogging, I think it's healthy for you to be in the classroom. And then you decide which one. This orientation, do it together. Check up yourself. If you can do it, that would be wonderful. If you can do it, that would be wonderful. This orientation... It is very important that you grasp it. Don't say, well, the lessons have not started. They've started. If you do the orientation study, you will know where we are coming from and where we are going. If you do the orientation, you will know the pattern. By the time you do the, each time you study an orientation note, do the assignment. Like today, you are going to subscribe to these 12 principles. You are going to write in your own language that I, so, so, and so, I subscribe to all these principles outlined today for the successful execution of the master class. I will operate within the boundaries created. You will write it in your own language. That's the assignment for today. Nothing more. Just this, that you subscribe to this. And anyway, you want to make it short or medium or long, that's fine. If you want to write what you receive, additional site you receive, that's fine. But the key thing we're looking for today is that on the at the end of this, if you're on the live blogging, just say, I subscribe to the principles, the 12 principles that govern the operation of the master class. If you're going to read the lesson in the classroom, after reading, you also write. Please don't clutter the classroom. Every single day, if you go into the classroom, check for the theme posted for that day. You see it highlighted in thick black. Orientation note number one. Open it, click it, it opens. After studying, you write. Today is orientation note number two. After you study these 12 principles, you subscribe. That shows us that we are you are on one page 
about how to do the master class in a way that glorifies Elohim. Brothers and sisters, that's it for today. But before we go, we'd like to say some things to you. It is terrible that many believers are walking like in the days of Lot and the days of Noah. The flood, until the flood came, the generation of Noah didn't know, even though he was warning them every day. Until fire breached or came on Sodom and Gomorrah, the generation of Lord did not know. Today, Christians are so careless with their destiny, with their fate. Christians are so focused on what will help them to get by. The way Christians go for what will help them to advance in their, in their workplace, whether it will mean going for fresher, refresher courses, whether it means to go for further degrees, which is all good. It's not bad, but it's just, there is something terrible when it comes to spiritual growth. People are not growing the way they ought to grow. People are not careful. A lot of people have constructed their own ideas of where their relationship with the Father is, and it has nothing to do with the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scripture does not define their spirituality. And people are just going about doing whatever they're doing, like flotsam, like jetsam. People are not pressing into the kingdom with the fervency of spirit that Yeshua spoke about. The result is that even though they are saved by grace, many don't know that their spiritual glaucoma has come upon them. They don't know that they are blind. They don't know they are naked. People don't know where they are. And because people are not open to Holy Spirit, and they are not open to the ministry of the world. There's so much premature satisfaction. People are prematurely satisfied. And the result is that they are not pressing in. Paul said in Philippians 3, I've not yet arrived. I'm pressing in. I want to apprehend that for which I'm apprehended by Yeshua, my Lord. Brothers and sisters, how can you relax? How can you pretend you are okay? By what authority? By what authority? Yeshua was constantly in a place where he wanted to know and do the will of the Father. How can you be satisfied without doing the will of the Father? There's an enemy called average. There's an enemy called premature satisfaction. The Father wants us to overcome that enemy, that premature satisfaction. Satan is using it to make Christians careless. How come the Christians are so unfaithful to little things given to them? So uncommitted. So people are just doing things. And people think if they can take some money and give gifts to the pastor, give gifts to brethren, and they, oh, they say, oh, you're a good man, you're wonderful, then that buys the loyalty of the pastor and that of the brethren, man and brethren. No, it can be self-deception. There's a thing called simony. From Simon of Samaria, who wanted to buy the gift of Holy Spirit with money. It's a sin. Don't try to use money to substitute your commitment and consecration to the Lord. Don't try to create your own righteousness and make yourself feel satisfied. It's a trick of the devil. I want to say this to you, the king is coming. Brothers and sisters, if you can't see, are you not seeing how America United States has become the divided states. Are you not seeing how Europe is in meltdown over this Brexit? Are you not seeing the gross fear, the thick pall of darkness over the Western Hemisphere? Brothers, are you not seeing? Are you not seeing what is happening? Can you just get back to studying the book of Revelation? Studying the epistles of Paul the Apostle. Studying what Yeshua said about the end of the age. Studying what Daniel said about the end of the age. Can you go back to them and know that all that is happening today is clearly articulated in the Holy Rich? My brothers and my sisters, be sharp in the spirit. Awake from sleep. Arise from slumber. Align with other remnants. Advance together. Occupy until he comes, for the king is coming. The days are slowly grinding to a logical end. What shall you be found in? 
on that day? Will you allow anybody to deceive you that you are okay? Will you allow yourself to be part of cohort of rebels? Because all over the world, there are cohort of rebels. If you see a rebel against authority of Elohim in a local assembly, come and see rebels congregate to that rebel. And they think it's okay for them to abuse servants of Elohim across the world. Brothers and sisters, it's time for people to check up your life, evaluate your life. Where are you at the scale of Elohim? If you ask the Lord, he'll show you. If you are sincere before the Lord, he'll show you. Don't be prematurely satisfied. Don't ever come to that place where you think it's okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will do a work of grace with this teaching note today. That you will help everyone to apprehend your divine purpose. To stay in your divine purpose. Holy Spirit, help your people to prepare that no one will come to the classroom and begin to behave unseemingly. Help your people to go through the video in the classroom, the audio in the classroom, the teaching notes in their spare time. Help your people to do their assignments for the day. Help your people to grow from grace to grace and glory to glory. Have your way, sovereign ruler of the universe. Thank you for answering our prayer and thank you for Pastor Grace on the camera. In the name that's above all names, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, Amen and Amen.